Hello, I'm Dr. Lina Chung, and I'm a senior consultant at the Department of Renal Medicine at Singapore General Hospital. I have been treating kidney patients for more than 35 years and helping them manage their worsening kidney function. As kidneys become weaker, patients are asked how they want to manage their kidney failure. There is no cure for kidney failure, but there are treatments that may help extend life and control symptoms. The treatment options are dialysis or kidney supportive care. We prepared this video for elderly patients with kidney failure and their caregivers who are trying to choose a treatment. Making a decision on which treatment to choose can be difficult. The goal of this video and the accompanying booklet you have been given is to help you make an informed decision about which treatment is the best fit for you. We will discuss different treatment options and the pros and cons of each option. You will then hear from other patients and their caregivers on their experiences. Treatments we will discuss are dialysis and kidney supportive care, or KSC in short. The first decision is to choose between dialysis and KSC. KSC is a treatment that focuses on managing your kidney failure symptoms. Dialysis is a treatment to clean your blood and do some of the work that healthy kidneys do. If you choose dialysis, you will then need to choose a type of dialysis. There are two main types of dialysis, peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. Let us start with peritoneal dialysis, or PD for short. It is also known as water dialysis. PD is a daily treatment done at home and at a time that is convenient for you. PD can be done by yourself or by your caregivers. Before starting PD, you will need a minor surgery to create an excess point at your belly. A small, soft plastic tube called a catheter will be inserted into your belly through this excess point. You will spend at least one night in the hospital for this surgery. A nurse will teach you or your caregiver how to do PD. During PD, a cleansing fluid flows into your body through the catheter to remove toxins. This exchange happens a few times to reduce the toxin levels in your blood. The exchanges can either be done manually or by a machine. You will need space to store the machine and water bags for PD. You will also need to keep the machine and house clean to avoid infection. There are two types of PD in Singapore. Let's start with Continuous Ambulatory Peritoneal Dialysis or CAPD in short. CAPD is done manually about 3 to 5 times a day, with each exchange taking 20 to 30 minutes. Most patients can continue with normal daily activities between exchanges. The second type is Automated Peritoneal Dialysis or APD in short. APD is done by a machine for 8 to 10 hours a day. It is typically done during sleep. Most APD patients can usually continue with normal activities during the day. Some other factors to consider for PD are PD has some risk of infection. It has a less strict diet and fluid intake than HD. It is usually less expensive than HD. An alternative to PD is hemodialysis, also known as HD or blood dialysis. HD is usually done at a dialysis center about three times a week. Each session takes around four to six hours. Most people feel tired right after dialysis, but they can go on with normal daily life when not receiving dialysis. Before starting HD, you will need a minor surgery on your arm to create access to your blood. However, the blood vessel needs two to three months after the surgery to be ready for dialysis. During this time, you can receive HD via a temporary excess point through a plastic tube around your neck or chest. Every time you receive HD, needles will be inserted into your arm. An artificial dialysis filter will clean your blood. You will need to travel to a dialysis center where nurses will perform dialysis for you. You will also have a chance to meet other patients. There are centers all over Singapore. 
your medical team can connect you with a suitable dialysis centre. Some other factors to consider for HD are it has some risk of infection. HD requires a stricter diet and fluid intake compared to PD. It is usually more expensive than PD. An alternative to dialysis is kidney supportive care, KSC, especially for elderly patients aged 75 and above with multiple health problems and limited life expectancy. KSC is not meant to extend life. The focus of care will be to maintain your quality of life. Less time spent on treatment will allow you to spend time with your loved ones and do activities that you enjoy. If you choose KSC, your doctor will discuss a care plan with you. No other preparation will be needed. However, you will still need to travel to the hospital or clinic for your doctor's appointments. If you choose KSC, you must take your medicine as prescribed and follow the diet that your medical team recommends. A community nurse can visit you at your home if needed. Some other factors to consider for KSC are there will be no risk of infection related to treatment. It is the least expensive treatment. Now you will hear from patients with kidney failure and their caregivers who have already chosen a treatment. They will share their thoughts on how they chose their treatment and their experiences. My name is Wu Yi Bao. In the past, I used to run a business. Now I can be considered as semi-retired as I still have work to do. My name is Ke Tu Hua. I'm 71 years old. I live with my daughter. I used to undergo hemodialysis three times a week. Now I undergo peritoneal dialysis for 10 hours throughout the night. My name is Li Shenchang. I started dialysis at the start of this year, thrice a week and four hours each time. My name is uh, P.G. Kemani. I am 86 years young. I go to dialysis for dialysis twice a week and every time it takes almost four hours. My name is Suji Binti Abdulaman. I'm 85 years old. My name is Hazira. I am 30 years old. I am the granddaughter of someone who was suffering from end-stage renal failure. She passed from her kidney failure. Caregivers, duties and burden. Initially, yes, I feel very burdened <laughs> because I'm the only one at home who knows the steps of the dialysis I'm, I, and I actually had a hard time training her. So it was very stressful for me because I really have to be there to watch her every step. Initially, I would feel that um, I'm very, my social lives and everything are very affected because I need to start the dialysis which is 10 hours to end. She still has mood swings now and then. That is the thing that is uh, quite uh, a burden to us. Lah. But uh, somehow or rather, we are more used to it already, so we'll just <laughs> take it as it is. In general, it is fine because I just follow what is written on the appointment list and bring him for follow-up visits. All trips to the doctor and dialysis centre are settled by me. Yeah, I will arrange my mom medicine once a week, clean the house and then help out with her anything if she needs my assistance. And then I send her to the hospital and sometimes if she's sick, the GP below our house. I didn't make the decisions per se, but I helped to translate the information from the doctors. I helped to explain it to my aunt, to my grandma, and I helped everyone to discuss and come to like a common agreement on which would be the best treatment for my grandmother. Positive aspects of treatment. I have no problem or pain when undergo dialysis. That's how I know that dialysis is not bad. I'm in really good spirits after dialysis. When I did not undergo dialysis, I was in very poor spirits. When she converted to PD, that's where her lifestyle kind of changed. There are more things that she can eat and she has more time um, to go out and she has more energy. Before undergoing dialysis, he had swollen feet, felt uncomfortable and was a little breathless. After dialysis, he no longer has these problems. Sometimes, however, his appetite is not so good. We never regret it because uh, when she was offered the jab alternative, 
her condition improved much better. In terms of social interaction, she still saw her children, she still saw her grandchildren and she saw her great-grandchildren. In the final year of her life, though, um, I remember very clearly it was Hari Raya. She changed, you know, put on her jewellery and then she went with us to all of the houses visiting her relatives. Negative aspects of treatment It is good for those who are able to sleep because you don't feel anything. There is just a little sound. If you don't like the sound, you can turn on the radio or listen to music. In this way, you won't hear the sound of the flutes. Most of the time on dialysis, is spent sleeping. But he can't concentrate or sleep well as he is afraid of accidentally moving the tubes of the dialysis machine. After the and this uh, dialysis uh, <coughs> treatment, I cannot do the, that kind of exercises which I used to do last time. My grandmother had a lot of medications and she was confused as to which is when. Coping with illness I try to relax myself and not to think too much. The doctor says I'm the same as usual. Sometimes, you will feel that something is not right with your body, but you still have to overcome it. You must think, it is nothing, just a small issue. After that, you will be okay. Do not stay in the house all day, lying there and waiting for the day to pass. That is very unfortunate. If you can move around and exercise, you should try to move and go exercise. Before she started dialysis, she is already in depression and she was thinking a lot of time of ending her life. So I talked to the doctor, I said, look, I, I think I need help. So I get the doctor to refer her to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist came in and talked to her and I think sort of opened her up. Nothing can be done if my time is up. In life, we will have to go. One day, we have to go too. I leave everything to God. Decision making. I can continue to live life normally. I can go to work, drive a car, and do anything as long as I want to. Then I thought, why don't I just choose to undergo dialysis? Although it is a little troublesome, I can still meet my friends. When I decided to undergo dialysis, I was not mentally prepared, so I did not have confidence. It was due to my wife's worries that I made the decision for dialysis. I myself made the decision not to go for dialysis. My children did not say anything because I'm already old. There is no benefit even if I undergo dialysis. It's all right. If the time to go comes, just go. Uh, initially, I thought, uh, I want to go send her. Lama. So we discussed among ourselves, I said, and herself also. She said, I got to go four hours, no, three times a week, and it's very troublesome. All is in support of her decision, what she wants. She says that she does not want dialysis because she knows the effects of dialysis on a person. She's seen someone in her family live through it for 20 years. Treatment goals My grandson is still young. I want to watch him grow up. As my daughter studies until very late every day. No one look after the three grandchildren. So I have to take care of them. I want to live a few more years to watch them grow up felt like she had achieved all that she needed to achieve and she didn't see the need to go to a very serious life extending treatments just to keep her alive in that sense. I felt that towards the end of my grandma's life when she stopped being able to tell the doctor or convey her wishes to the doctor, I made sure that the doctor knew what she wanted. Advice to others. As a caregiver, Communication is very important. Um, you don't just take care of the patients and not talk to them and let them open up. For me, 
as a caregiver, I feel that I will just let her talk. And she likes to tell me any other things, I will just let her talk and just let her vent out anything. And after that, she will feel that when she needs something, she will come to you. It will be good to let the patient open up and talk about their feelings, their views about dialysis so that it doesn't appear so scary to the public and those who are suffering from renal failure. Back then, I thought he should start dialysis earlier, but he had refused. If he had started earlier, it may not be as serious. Not everyone has the same condition. I hope those with patients at home will treat them properly and not be anxious or angry. Your anger cannot resolve the issue, so it is better to look at it positively and think of ways to deal with it. Basically, it's a private, uh, it's a personal matter. You know, we can't we can't say, oh, you you have to do this because this work for us, maybe not for others. You no, know, so they have to arrange within the family members. Uh, primarily, must ask the patient. Uh, then slowly discuss with other family members. Uh, it's a personal decision. Uh. I wish we had that conversation earlier. You know, where we could sit together as a family and be very frank about the fact that. My grandmother is not doing too well. There needs to be a way where we can introduce this conversation in a way that makes it comfortable for caregivers and also for the patient. I think it's very important for the family to speak to the patient and try to understand their perspective of what having lived a good life means to them. Here is a summary of the treatment options. PD is a daily treatment done at home. You will need a surgery on your belly to create an access point. A catheter will be inserted into your belly for dialysis. PD has some risk of infection. HD is done at a dialysis centre three to four times a week. You will need a surgery on your arm to create access to your blood. Needles will be inserted into your arm every time you receive dialysis. HD has some risk of infection. KSC will involve medicine and monitoring by your medical team. No other preparation will be needed. You will manage your symptoms through diet and medicine. There will be no risk of infection related to treatment. You have just heard from other patients and their caregivers. Each patient and family had different reasons and priorities on why they chose a specific treatment. Ask yourself what matters most to you. Discuss with your family and doctor what the best treatment is for you. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please read the accompanying booklet. Please note that this video should not replace doctor consultations or kidney counselling.